Hi guys, it's me Karen, and I was asked by one of my subscribers to do a video on um, my distress inks. So she uh, had requested to, for me to show all the ones I have and uh, name them, and also the ones I usually use mostly in my coloring books. Okay, so we're going to start off with uh, these. They come in two different sizes, okay? These are the little tiny cubes, and these usually come in a set of four. This is the set of four that I have, and it came in this set. So we have picked raspberry, spiced marmalade, peacock feathers, and mustard seed. When I did my Phanomorphia book, these were the colors that I usually used the most of, along with some vintage photo, which is a brown tone. So um, these are the pink ones, pink, orange, blue, and yellow. And I will go ahead and, since they all have a little ink uh, pad underneath them, they go on a tool. And I'll kind of just give you a quick look at the color. So that's how they come out. They're pretty, well, I got a dab there, pretty close to the um, colors that are on the lids. This has to go back underneath there. So I, I don't know if I can do this inking on all of the inks that I have, but I thought I'd at least do this one. And that is the Spiced Marmalade. This is the Peacock Feathers, which is a really um, wonderful blue. I like that one a lot, but it's not great for like um, doing a sky or anything. It's better for doing um, <laughs> like rainbows or such. It's also great for doing clouds but not the sky part, just the cloud part. And this is the mustard seed yellow, kind of a bright yellow. Okay, and like I said, these come in a set of four, and you know, there are lots of little sets, so you could buy a, a whole pile of them. They are cheaper, I believe, because you get four of these, and you only get one of these, and these run like six dollars. You can get them on sale, um, these run about the same price, if not a little higher, but you get four pads. So those are the only ones I have in the little set. But the other nice thing about the little cubes is they stack in a section like this. Okay. Now, um, the other sets I have. I have a lot of these. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to lay some out here. And then I'll go over their names, and you can kind of tell that these colors are kind of the um, dark, more vintage looking colors that I have. So we have Vintage Photo, which is a gorgeous brown. We have Scattered Straw, which is kind of a brownish yellowish. I will try to get a piece of paper and show you what these all look like. The Dusty Concord is my grape color um, purple. It's a really gorgeous purple. We've got Crushed Olive, Wild Honey, and Rusty Hinge. And I will mix um, the Vintage Photo with the Rusty Hinge, and that looks really good, along with a Walnut ink that I also have in the Distress Inks. And it just makes a really neat uh, vintage piece. So what I will try to do here is find an ink pad. By the way, Distress uh, ink pads come in the round shape and the square shape. And since I used the brown a lot, I will go ahead and use that one with the square one. So, Vintage Photo is a gorgeous brown color. And the more ink you put on, the darker color you will get. I've used this on the lions that I did in Phantomorphia. OK, 
Okay, then we'll get out the uh, rusty hinge, which is a red tone. And we'll stick it here. And you'll see how nicely these two can blend together. But it looks like the name says rusty hinge. So it's a rust color. <laughs> okay, now we have a wild honey and I have to get another tool for that. And I'll show you this one. And it kind of has a honey tone. You can make it a uh, orangey color by adding more and more color to it. Or if you do it very lightly, you get a very soft uh, glowing color. So that one is that one. We'll go do the uh, gathered straw or scattered straw. So you can try to guess what color this one's going to be. It's going to have a little bit of a brown tone, but it's going to be um, straw colored. Kind of has some yellow in it. Where this one has red, this one has a brown tone. Okay, and then we have our olive, which is in our green section. So I'll get out on the green one. And it has some bright tones to it, and the more you put down, the darker it will get. So you have a nice olive color. And the purple is just going to scream purple when we put that one down. And I have a square pad one for this. I use this one, ooh, sorry about the bang, for, of course, like Halloween. And it's a gorgeous purple. So there we go on the purple ones. So that is this set that I have here and we will take those away and put them over here and go with another set. Turn the paper over so you can have a view of these. So I have blue which is a faded jeans. This is the walnut color which is the darkest brown. This is hickory smoke which is gray this is a lilac, shaded lilac, and we will take out the aged mahogany, and this one is fired brick. Okay, and we will put these down for you. I have to find a blue one of the pads here, so I could do all the blues in one pass, I think. Maybe I'll switch this one out. So I'm taking away the jeans and I'm gonna bring in pine needles. <laughs> okay, so then I need a green one. <laughs> okay, we'll start with the pine needles here. Just move everybody down. Pine needles is going to be the darkest green I have. And of course, with its name, it's gonna look like uh, dark pine. Isn't that pretty? I'll use this on pine branches or if I need a deep green in a card or anything. Now I bought all these uh, distress inks for when I did cards and um, I also did a lot of uh, journals and stuff and I used it for journaling. Okay, we're going to do the hickory smoke. I'll move that one out of the way. This is a softer kind of a, not black, but a, a gray color. So for smoke, for dark clouds, and the more you put on there, it'll get dark, but it will not turn black. I do have a black, it's in here somewhere. It's called black soot, and it is definitely black but this one is a soft gray. Okay, we'll do the walnut, yep, brown. The walnut is just going to show up as a really dark brown here. So it's almost a um, 
a black color in there. It's a really good color. All of these are great colors. I love them all. <laughs> oh, not that pad. I've got to find another one. Um, sorry, I keep all these in a little container. Pink. This one will work. Okay, so we'll go with the fire brick because it's brighter than the uh, mahogany. So we'll get some of that on there. And it's going to be the red with a brown tone in it. Just turn the pad and the age mahogany. It's got the purple in it. And then we have the very, very soft shaded lilac. I got this along with a really pretty um, green. They were kind of the last ones that had come out. But, I mean, this is just yummy. I love this color. Okay. Now these all react different with water also. So if you because the um, Distress Ink is a water-based ink, you can go in with a water brush and change the colors on these a little bit. And each one will change a different color, which is cool. Okay, we'll put these aside now. Then we will go in with the blues that I have. And I'm pretty sure I have <laughs> another piece of paper here. Okay. So we have the faded jeans, the salty ocean, the tumbled glass. Let's see. And then I have the ones I use a lot, Broken China and Stormy Skies. And we'll just show you the difference of these guys. These are the two I use a lot, and these guys I will add in. And you can tell by maybe this is the one I use for sky mostly, and then if I want to darken it to give it... Um, Kind of a stormy look around the edges. This is the one I will use. They go great together. And these are all different and I will show you their coloring also. So we'll get the blue one and start with this. So we have the tumble glass first. Sorry about that. So it's kind of a light blue. Then we will go in with the Salty Ocean, which is close but it has a darker undertone to it. And then we have the Faded Jeans, which is your like your denim jean color. A nice dark Color. I have to change that. Okay, then we will get into the broken china. He has very interesting names for his <laughs> inks. So it's kind of the blue uh, color that's on the patterned china pieces. And this one is the stormy skies, and it has very um, kind of a dark undertone to it, so almost a black under shadow. And these two work really nicely together. And again, you can change the looks by adding water to them. And they will change the color. Okay, so the blue colors. And we will stick those over here. And we'll get into some yellows. And I will try to do it on this page. So we have antique linen. 
squeezed lemonade. Okay, then we have that cracked pistachio, pumice stone. It's a different one I have. And this is my peeled paint I like a lot. And then we will use that I had two other ones. We'll use the um, black soot. And I need to get a green one, a yellow one, and a beige-ish one. Okay. We'll do the antique linen first. Which is a really interesting color. It kind of has green in it. Uh, so it's kind of like the straw with green. This one is a very bright lemon yellow. Almost kind of has a neon effect to it when it dries. And then we will do the cracked pistachio. has a yellow tone on it and then we'll do my peeled paint which is kind of a light olive color I love to do uh, leaves in this one okay pumice stone is a uh, kind of a gray brown the uh, dark tones in it and then of course we have black soot which is going to be black <laughs> okay and I use this a lot like on um, Halloween it's gonna have some gray property to it because they're all distress inks adding water will give them this cool effect that goes through it so if you spray these with water I do a lot of that while I'm coloring, but if you add some water to that and then remove it, it'll spread and splatter a little bit. It doesn't do it too much on the black or on this paper because it's copy paper, but it'll do it great on the um, coloring books. But uh, like if you wanted to bring any of this color out on any of these, you can do that also. All right, so those are those colors. I got to keep the ones I use out of the way. That one is not. I thought I had a pink one. It's a light pink one, and I'm trying to find it. So these all get moved out of the way. And then I need to grab another piece of paper, so hold on a minute. Okay, this is our last set. So we have Spun Sugar, Tattered Rose, Shabby Shutters. The one I've been using a lot lately is the Victorian Velvet, and my other favorite is Gathered Twigs. So um, we'll go ahead and start with the sponge sugar. It's the lightest one of Tim Holtz's uh, Distress inks. This is not one of my favorites, although it looks really pretty on the lid. I have a problem um, finding anything. I can put this really light pale pink on that it will stand out on. <laughs> <laughs> I've tried to use it on my uh, planners and uh, cards and stuff. It's just a really, really light pink, and unless you're shading it with white, it's hard to tell. This is the Tattered Rose, and this will have a brown tone to it. And in case you're wondering, um, these are what the refills look like. They come in with a little squirter on it, and you get them in the same uh, colors. 
and this one happens to be dry so I am going to show you how to redo them. You just take a bit on the little tube here and you kind of just draw it across and then you go this way. Okay, you don't have to put a whole lot on there. I'm going to put this whole squeezer on here because this has been sitting up on my shelf and I have not used it in a while. Okay, now you do not want to use that right away because it's really wet. And the um, pad on these, I don't know if you have noticed, there you could hear it. They're in like little layers. The top layer is like a fabric piece. It's not the spongy stuff that you're used to on other ink pads. It is actually a felt piece. And now that I have let it sit there for a little while, we'll take a little ink off of there. And it'll come up a little darker for you. And it's a really pretty color. It goes nicely with the um, Victorian velvet. It's got the brown tones in it. High pink. Okay, I can't use that for that color. <laughs> We're going to go with the uh, Shabby Shutters, and this is going to be a uh, kind of like a lemon peel color. It matches with the Prismacolor yellow lemon peel really well. <laughs> okay, sorry. I'm going to have to delete that out. This is the uh, Victorian Velvet, which I absolutely loved using in the Magical Dawn book. So it's kind of that dusty pink color, which I love. And then we have the last one here, which is Gathered Twigs. I used the Gathered Twigs along with the um, vintage photo when I'm doing any kind of vintage look. So that is the Gathered Twigs. It's a little lighter than the other ones. I'll bring in the vintage photo and show you it next to it. So this has got more of a green tone. This has got a red tone. And if I could find the uh, walnut one, I would show you what it looks like. But I don't know if I can find it. <laughs> I usually keep these in really good order, but I pulled them all out to do the video with. Okay. Okay, so here we have the um, walnut stain to go along with the other two colors. So we have gathered twigs, vintage photo, and now we're going to use the darkest of them in the walnut stain. And you'll see that it is a light tan, kind of a reddish, and then we have the black tones. And when you put all three of those together on a sheet of paper and blend them all together, they make a really nice um, variegated brown tone look on a vintage piece of paper. You can make it look almost like it is a, a piece of old paper and that's what I did a lot of in my journals and crumpled the paper up, added water to it and added the um, distress inks on them. <laughs> yeah, you could probably find a video way back if you wanted to look in my channel. <laughs> It'll be down there somewhere. So that is it. Those are the ones that I own. If I can remember, I will put a list of them in my uh, did a little box underneath the, you know, in the description box. And I will list the ones that I use the most up at the top, and then I'll put a couple of spaces down and then just list the rest of them. So the ones that I use the most in my coloring books, I will uh, list up at the top of that. And then I probably should give you a little bit more information about the Distress inks themselves. Now, number one, that they are a water-based um, ink, 
but they are also a uh, the Tim Holtz has made them, but he's also with a ranger. Ranger is the uh, company that he works alongside of. Okay, he also has on his channel Tim Holtz, and that's his name here. That's T I M H O L T Z, and he will demonstrate all of his distress ink. Um, properties, what they can do, what they can't do. But they are an acid-free, non-toxic, fade-resistant, water-based dye ink. And they are great for doing anything that's vintage, or if you want to give it a stained look or an aged look. And you can do some really fun things with these. Um, so if you wanted to check out, and I will leave a link down below also to his um, channel that he has, and how he uses these to make uh, different projects and stuff. So I'm trying to think if there's anything else you need to know. Okay, uh, tools. I kind of went over that a little bit. Round tool, flat tool, it doesn't make any difference. They come with the same pads. These just happen to be round and these are square. Uh, <laughs> then they have these mini ones that have a tiny little pad on each side and I use those to get into teeny tiny little spots. You can use any other ink tool out there. You do not have to have these specific kinds. I also use um, just a regular sponge sometimes to get a different effect when I lay down the ink. So you can get these at the craft store and cut them up into sizes that you like. Um, you can use Q-tips if you like. You can use makeup sponges. You can use paintbrush type items. Um, so anything that you're used to using on an ink or doing a stamping, you can use these also to uh, stamp with. Um, whenever I have like a little bit of a, a mistake on one of my pages, I will just go in and this is just a little stamp that I have and all it has is little dots on it and it adds a nice little coloration if you made a boo-boo you can do that if you have put this down on your coloring page and it left a mark add a little water to it dry it up and the mark will come up not perfectly but I mean you if you've seen some of my I'm trying to see if I can get a page here the last uh, picture I did uh, of the frog the cute little frog. He's adorable. Anyway, I used a lot of different ink techniques with him. The blue in the background has got the water splatters on it. So if you can see the light effect back here, that is just from putting water down on the distress ink and lifting it off. I also used it as a um, paintbrush. Used it, put it on a um, plastic sheet put the ink pad right on here, then used my water brush, and then I painted with it. Also down here, I used, oh gosh, sorry, the uh, stamp that I just showed you on the uh, floor down here on the bottom because I had some messes when I painted him. I got some on my hand and I put it down and I had little spots and I said, well, we'll get a speckled floor out of it. <laughs> That's how I uh, do my inking. I can always fix something with a little bit of a stamp or a little bit of water or anything else because they are water-based. They move like watercolors, which is really nice. That's why I like them so much. So that is it. Hope you enjoyed the video and I hope that answered any questions. And like I said, I will leave more information down in the um, box below. Don't forget that they do come in different sizes. Cheaper option. Work just as long as the rest of them. Have a great day, guys, and I will see you in the next video. Take care now.